again. Welcome to Best Marsh and their memories. We're looking at 70s football and we're looking at the particular golden age of English soccer in Europe. And they were, was it a golden age, do you think? Oh, definitely. I, I mean, I would think that any teams in Europe from, from all the other countries dreaded having to play a British team because they really were, you know, red hot at that, at that stage. You'd started it in the 60s. And your best memory of Europe? Winning the European Cup was the biggest thing that happened to the club. On the showing so far, United were proving the better side. Hard working best put the ball out to the left, where Sadler had been playing like a demon. The return centre uh, was a beauty. Charlton headed it home. The match was by no means won. Benfica pulled off a beauty through Grasser. Stepney collected and fed his forwards. Waiting to receive was mighty best. He simply walked the ball into the net. What a goal! United in the lead. And that wasn't all. The Busby Babes were raring to go. They hammered Benfica. Watch this fantastic goal. My, oh, my, how they cheered Kid, the birthday boy, for that super header. Even Stepney joined in. The Benfica fire had nearly been extinguished. But where United finished, not on your life. Bobby Charlton made it 4-1. At last, Matt Busby, the maestro of Manchester United, had groomed a team great enough to beat Europe's best. He was king of soccer. His wonderful 11 men were all princes. Uh, I think our best performance in Europe was actually in 66 when we went to Benfica and uh, they had a good side at that time. It was even better, I think, than when we beat them in the, in the European Cup final. And uh, we had beaten them 3-2, I think, at home. and It was a very tight game. We had to go there and they were almost unbeatable uh, at, at home. And we went there and absolutely demolished them, beat them 5-1. And, uh, it, I mean, it was near, as near the perfection as you could get. And actually, it was funny because uh, Sir Matt never, ever told us to play defensively, ever. I mean, he'd just give you the ball and said, go out and enjoy yourself. And on this occasion, he, he sort of, he said, go out and not just keep it tight for the first 15, 20 minutes, see how it goes. Of course, I disobeyed his orders again and scored twice in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> but it was funny because he, he still panicked. He didn't mean you, though, George. He just meant <laughs> everybody else. Yeah, yeah, so he used to talk to me, talk to me separately, I think, yeah. <laughs> But uh, that was as near, I mean, I remember so coming you in. You got to half time, didn't you? How many were you up at half time? Oh, we were three ahead, at, I think, at half. So we were 6 2 up in aggregate. So we came in, we, we started opening the champagne as a, you know, as a bit of fun. And, at and half time? At half time. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, no, 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 take it easy. Because the year before, we had thrown away a 4 1 lead against Sporting Lisbon, I think, and they beat us five. So I think he was having this sort of slight... Six, six to up and you saw Matt Busby nervous. Yes. Yeah, very well, I mean, we think actual... about the Liverpools and the United. Yeah. I mean, yeah. City did well in Europe. In actual fact, before I, I, I joined City, they, they'd won, um, I think it was seven trophies in seven years under Malcolm Allison and Joe Mercer. Yeah. And uh, did everything they, you know, they could do. And uh, they were brilliant years for Manchester City, certainly. But uh, whenever you go, we were talking about again before the show, whenever you go abroad when you play in Europe, they always find ways. And I, <laughs> when we come back over here, it's the same thing of making you feel uncomfortable, you know, changing the size of the pitch, watering it before the game. Have you worked for teams that have played similar tricks? Uh, unfortunately, yes, I have, yeah. yeah. Well, like what? I mean, uh, does, did Alison used to do that? Uh, Malcolm did it, too, yeah. <laughs> what, what, we, what we do at City very often is um, we would water the, the pitch only like two hours before the game. And we knew what was going to gonna happen and uh, we had the right studs and... Uh, so they'd have trained on a hard pitch? No, they would have seen the pitch before in the morning and it would have been bone hard and by the time they arrived at the ground it would have been soaking wet. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, let's, uh, obviously the tricks of the trade, there were some good football as well. Let's look at Tottenham Hotspur against Dynamo Tbilisi. Um, those teams that you saw there, I mean, I, the number two spelt wrongly, I believe, isn't it, George? Yes, I think there should have been an E on the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, my producer tells me, because he did Russian, that that was the family name of Stalin. The number two, but we won't hold that against them. The right. That's good to know that. <laughs> it's, it's another one of those great facts. The Tottenham <laughs> side, of course, uh, an excellent Tottenham side that had two good years in Europe already. This is at White Hart Lane. It's December 1973, third round, second leg. Brian Moore will give us details of the aggregate. Welcome to White Hart Lane, a cold night with a fierce wind blowing, but what promises to be an excellent night of European football. 
the Russian side on the left there in the red shirts, Dynamo Tbilisi, are said by Spurs players to be just about the best side they've faced in Europe for years. Even so, Spurs came away from the first leg in Russia a fortnight ago with a 1-1 draw, and that puts them in a good position tonight. Though this tie, believe me, is far from over yet. Peters now, putting it straight to, to Asatiani as the Russians now pick it up again. Machaizde. Still Machaizde, and there was a deflection, and that very nearly waited off the number 11, Kipiani. Peters header, McGrath. Peters. Played wide again towards Coates and Evans. Coates getting it across nicely. And McGrath has scored. Chris McGrath, the young Belfast boy, has put Spurs ahead. Good Saev. Machaidzi. And Kutsilava again in a very dangerous position, and England was so aware of that Russian captain's shooting power, he came streaking out of the box to take the, the ball from him. But it's not away yet, Kipiani and Kutsilava again right in there, Machaidzi. And there's Chivas right back there doing a defensive job, but the Russians still a long way from being beaten. Now for the number six cross, and he can again there, Kutsayev tried to get up. Machaidzi, and there's... A tremendous shot, and it's not away yet by Hurtzilava against the post, and a corner for the Russian. Evans. Chivers coming away from the defence. Not to get on with any great uh, degree of accuracy. Spurs, of course, in this second half will have quite a strong wind at their backs. Good sire. Machaidzi to Giorgio Shvili. The long raking pass there, Nodia. In fact, didn't make a touch on it. And Naylor has given them a great chance there. And that very nearly was a terrible mistake there by Terry Naylor. Ebralidzi almost got there before Jennings. And that surely now will wake Spurs up. Leading 1-0. But certainly in uh, no position to play funny games like that. Pratt. A good, powerful shot there by John Frackman to uh, wide. Evans again. England has gone up for that free kick and had stayed up. Coates. Still Coates. Good play there by Ralph Coates. Oh, and a great header there by Mike England. And that was Spurs 2 0 ahead. George Ashville has gone with him and Naylor. Harassed him enough to uh, force him to pass it straight to Chivers, and now Asatiani for the Russians. Ebrelitsi to Machaidzi. Good sire. And a corner to Tbilisi. Good Saev. Oh, and it's a goal there, scored by the number six, Ebralidzi. And Ebralidzi has put the Russians back into the game. So the number five, Inchagashvili, right in there. Martin Peters in there. Martin Chivers at the near post. Here comes the corner again, curling on the win once more. Mike England is in there. And a Beal misjudged that one, but won it back again. Chivers, very deep indeed. Now that long stride of his taking it into the Russian half. 
Peters. Turn on again for Chivers, but Judge Ashvili is there. Can tuck it back, and he almost made a mess of it. It's with John Black for Tottenham. And here's Peters in a good position. Chivers and McGrath are in the middle. There's Chivers going for it again! Peters pushed in the back there by number three, Chelitsi. And Spurs moving with confidence now. Pratt crossing it in once more, and Martin Peters behind the ball! And Martin, and Martin Peters has added another one! McGrath. To Perryman. McGrath again. McGrath to Perryman once more. What a good piece of play again by Tottenham. And McGrath is through. Russians coming back quickly. Peters hitting it first time, but straight at the goal. Azatiani losing it. And now Pratt. Chivers is up there again, and Spurs have got a lot of players forward. Here's John Pratt once more. And he's got no! Well, my eyes deceived me for a moment there. Forward again for Chivers. Oh, and a beautiful save there by the goalkeeper, Gautier. As the final whistle goes, when Chivers nearly made it three. Five goals by Spurs, five headers. It's amazing how good we are at, um, uh, in the air. Even the, the Russians had obviously worked on, that, <laughs> on their defensive qualities in the air. Yeah. But that was a tremendous performance. But that was the nice thing about, you know, you, you played like 42 league games and the internationals and cup games, but the European games were, they were something special. It was like the icing on the cake, you know, but it really was a special occasion. The whole, the atmosphere, uh, the, the excitement, it was, it was always a special night in Europe. I mean, obviously, I mean, there's some horrendous trips you go on. I mean, I remember going once to Albania, I mean, it's a, it's like it was like stepping back 300 years in time. You know, you just you couldn't eat the food. You had to take your own food. You couldn't eat the food. They had no transport. I mean, the weather was miserable. The people you, you never saw a smile. I mean, you were sleep. You might as well have slept on the floor. I mean, it was horrendous. But on the other hand, you go to places like France and Italy, and it was you know it was tremendous. But it was always interesting. There was always something different. What about you? I mean, you you had to, you beat Panathinaikos. And yeah. Go on, tell us that one. Yeah. Oh, that's just the trip we had. Uh, Manchester City we played in uh, Pathanikos, and, and um, Pushkas was the coach of Pathanikos, and we we beat them 3 0 in Greece. And uh, afterwards, we had a banquet, and uh, all the city lads were down one side drinking champagne and pints of lager, mm -hmm. and all of the other team were down the other side drinking Coca Cola and seltzer water. <laughs> and both teams get up and do their speeches, and the city directors are there, and all the directors from Pathanikos. And Malcolm gets up and you know is very gracious as he always was <laughs> <laughs> in victory. And um, and then Puskas gets up and he said he says um, he said oh, tonight I'm very ashamed. He said uh, my team. He said they cannot play. He said but worse they can't even drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know f fond memories of playing in Europe. Well, certainly. Those are the days. Well, I mean yeah. you, that old city side of yours under Allison, it was um, great drinkers. Well, <laughs> the stories I've heard, I mean, they were, they, they were a, a, a touring party, weren't they? A no, I, th party. I think, in all honesty, I think the thing about it is, is when you get a group of people together that enjoy each other's company, enjoy each other's play, I think uh, it's really special. And um, I, I know George probably had the same uh, situation with United, yeah. but um, it's really great to go away with, with, with great players in a great team and, and win lots of games. And it's, it's like camaraderie and... Uh, I feel, I feel very, uh, I appreciate my opportunity to be able to do that. Does it, does it refer back then to the, to the group morale, the morale of the team players? I mean, come on, look, we're going to look at a Liverpool game now, but d can, can you look back at Liverpool's dominance as being a reflection of that shared experience of constantly being, not being out there on Wednesday nights in Europe? You know, I would say that that's definitely a factor in their success. You know, you, we talked uh, in earlier shows about the Liverpool team, and it's always the same names that keep coming up. You know, you look at the, the, Here they the are lineup. Again. Here they are again. <laughs> exactly, yeah. and and they probably they're probably great friends off the field as well as on the field. And they, you know, I'm sure that they've got their little cliques, their golfing cliques, and their and their social cliques yeah. and stuff like that. And and that's very much a big part of their success, I would think. All right. Well, there's that Liverpool team. This is a Keegan game. Toshak Callahan.
all those boys we've talked about. Let's go and look at it. Saint Etienne are always a formidable side in European competition. Currently, they're lying sixth in their own league, and they've only won one away game all season. But in Europe, in their last nine European games, they've conceded only one goal. Our highway to take it up for Liverpool. Bart and I with him conceding the corner. An atmosphere here tonight matching the wall of noise which surrounded the players at San Etienne a fortnight ago. Keegan. Djokovic has missed it! Santini's throw, back from Ravelli. Senegal in the middle, two men at the back of the penalty area. This is Ravelli, nice one-two for Santini. Good tackle, but Ravelli gets the shot, and the clearance is miskicked by Neil. And there's an awful scramble going on, and Neil has tidied up his own mistake. Cristiano Lopez with the ball. Hughes meeting the header. Hughes again, falling for Santini. Kennedy now taken by Batanai. Lake Ahe. Chased by Rosto, and Rosto is offside. Lake's cross, found his man well. A good diving save by Clements from Senegal to turn it round. Rushto, brilliant save! Casey's clearance went to Rushto, who hammered it with his right foot. Clements saved brilliantly. Case, Keegan. Callaghan turns it for Kennedy. Callaghan into space. And three men in the middle. Highway going to make a fourth. Oh. Callaghan crosses, Keegan is in, and it was just deflected, but it's come the highway, and Jovion blocked his shot. There's Bartonin. Larke. Senegal to Chadier. Callaghan. Keegan. Rosto. Larke. And Lake tries a shot, but Clemens did well to cover. Hughes sent Rushto one way and goes the other. Now finds Jones off his toe and very quick to recover his own mistake. Oh, that's a foul, surely. Referee put his whistle to his lips, let play go on. Kennedy to Hughes. French coming up, pressuring the last man with the ball. And Smith knows the answer to that, comes dribbling through to try to beat the offside, and back go the French defenders. Callaghan, towards Toshak's head. Crowd really warming to the sway and the cut and thrust of this European Cup quarter-final. and Keegan centers Case jean -Vion. Case Case's shot but it won't be a goal there's a foul on jean -Vion. Smith Clements calling for it Hughes Jones and Hughes again Defenders again moving out, but the offside trap didn't work that time. Djokovic went for a header, and again, and now Case puts one back towards the empty goal and puts it wide. Hughes. 
Well to full rush to Senegal's header. Carries all through the challenge from Neil. This could be dangerous. Four men forward supporting him. This is Rushto, and he's got a chance for his right foot. Brilliant save by Clements. That's Rushto. And now at the other end, a free kick to Liverpool. Keegan walks away from it. Case is there too, and it's going to be Case. No, it's going to be Keegan. And now Kennedy. Good save by Djokovic. Kennedy found the mark well. Now highway. Jean Vion to Senegal. Bartonai. Bartonai shot swerved and goes in. Another goal here, and the French celebrate. Well, Saint Etienne have been the dominant side of French football for the last decade. Nine times they've been champions of France, five times cup winners, and they've done the double four times in the last nine seasons. Here's the corner to Rushto's head. Gone wide. And there's a bad back pass. Merchelier's heart must have been in his mouth. Smith to Neil. A curious one from Lopez. Put the ball out for a Liverpool throw. Callaghan, Neil, and Toshek going after it. Kennedy, 2-2! Two, two. Turned back by Smith. Ball would come living with the ball again. Quarter of an hour of the second half gone. And we must be in here for one of the great nights of European football in this last half hour. Djokovic up with Tosha. Case. Atmosphere boiling here at Anfield. Lobbing it forward, header back by Lopez. And Fairclough is onside. This now could be interesting. Fairclough! Super sub strikes again. Highway on the touchline, just Fairclough in the box. Now it's Liverpool's turn to play possession. Slow the pace. Keegan has come through. Cross towards Fairclough. Good header away. Three goals to one Liverpool lead. Three, two on aggregate. We played more than a minute over the 45 in this second half. A place in the European Cup semi-final awaiting the winners. Referee now has his whistle in his mouth. He's looked to his linesman. Liverpool went on to win the cup. Spurs losing to Feyenoord, the one that we saw them go through to in their final. But uh, well, Liverpool, Saint Etienne looked great as well. They weren't a bad side, the French side. Uh, Rochetto, of course, is, you know, a world class player. Uh, but even sitting here watching that, I mean, you could feel the atmosphere. It's, it's different. I mean, the Europeans, the European nights were special. There's the other thing the downside of international competition, international club competition. When you get to the World Club Championship, yeah. you played one of those against Estudiantes. Estudiantes, yeah. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could have done without the ball, really, the two games. I mean, they were, it was, uh, they were disgraceful. The difference between uh, Britain and the rest of the world is, is quite staggering. I think that with, with British players, you pretty much know who they are. I mean, they're, ug I mean, they're ugly type players and they yeah. go out and kick you up in the air. But you look at them before the game and they, and they look like they're going to kick you up in the air. I think when you go to South America, um, it can be anybody. It can be like a 120 pound little weakling and he'll bite your ear and he'll do this and he'll pull your face and you know, elbow you and all that. You know. 
and it can be anybody, but I think in Britain... Even Pele? Even Pele, yeah, he did that to me in a game in, in Florida, in Tampa, Florida. Put his, uh, after an incident, he, he rubbed my head and then put his finger in my ear and pulled my ear out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's amazing, actually. Pele, I tell you, he can take care of himself. You know, he, they all try to kick him. He's a great, great, great player. But I tell you, when he had to, he could take care of I think, I think you find that with most, most great players. They can look after themselves, usually. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like Rod says, you know the British lads are going to kick you. All right, yeah. George and Roddy, thank you for looking after us tonight and spending uh, half an hour with football across the, across the international boundaries there. Thank you. Until next time, from us all, goodbye. <laughs>